Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the UP. I am Brown Sugar, and real late in the night or early in the morning, however you view 2 a.m. So, thinking about ideas for fucking podcast episodes, so I figured might as well just jump into some current events going on. And it's only shit that I find interesting, too, so it, it, this is very subjective. And it's also going to be a mix of shit that is happening in my life too so yeah um let me hop into it uh, last week future and little uzi dropped a uh a, a collab and i'm not going to say it's trash but you know first like five or six songs not a single one stood out to me um granted i no, no actually this is, that should help it I was I was high when I start when I first started listening to it. I'm high now, by the way. Kind of coming down a little bit, but I feel like that should have enhanced my listening experience, especially if it was Future and Lil Uzi. Because I don't know when it comes to like collab art, like when it's like collab projects, I I keep lowering and lowering my expectations. Like when it came to this one future is one of my favorite all-time artists um lil uzi's clean as fuck he, he he's up there for my current artist right now i like him a lot but you know i don't know it's just like i haven't listened to the whole thing yet so that's why i'm not going to say it was garbage or trash but <laughs> it's um something it, it was something that i find disappointing so far i mean the last if, unless like the last half of the album like like hits like no skips and then i will i will like come back and um redact my uh my statement here and saying it but i don't know just so far none of them really hit for me um because when you when you guys listen to like a new set of music like a new album or mixtape whatever we're also like looking for like songs that like stand out and i shit you not i can't name a single song off that and i gave it a listen to like the first like five or six songs when it came out and then i listened to it the morning after too when i was out doing errands and i just say uh, i i can't remember a single song off that but I'll, i'll probably try to give it another chance and if I don't find any songs on there that I'm fucking with, I'll it'll it'll go down as certified trash. Um, but I had mentioned like collab albums, just like when I know that they're coming out, they just keep like my expectations keep getting like lowered and and lowered like severely. I remember like the first collab album that. Uh, that was coming out that I was real excited for I think it's like a big one too because everybody was like waiting on this uh, the the Huncho Jack Huncho Jack Cactus Jack or whatever the fuck it is like the fucking Travis Scott and Quavo mixtape that shit was fucking dick wipes like I, I like I, I only remember Modern Slavery and that's just because I put it on one of my my playlist but anytime i listen to that playlist that specific one because i break it down i break my playlist like up between like songs that i'm like currently listening to but that one anytime it came on i'd skip the fuck out of it just because like that that just was horrible and like i think since then like i felt betrayed by collab albums and just a lot of them don't hit and i'm not going to like count like producers and and then like an artist because like like savage mode for example i was talking about this with jordan after the gym tonight but it's like the the main the main focus is usually like the artist and then like the producers like obviously like production quality their beats and whatever but you know it's kind of just like one shining artist like so those work well like like nav and the wheezy um tape that came out two weeks ago that shit's good and i don't like nav like i did not think i do not think he's a good artist i like him in some features like uh beebs in the trap and then also yosemite because i don't know he adds like good like uh his voice is kind of like a nice aesthetic in some songs it just has to be the right song but and i my friend jordan was telling me about that how good it was and i was like "Eh, snap i don't know but good fucking album um mix it i don't know what the fuck it is but Go ahead and give it a listen to if you 
haven't already. It's pretty good. Um, don't need friends with a little baby. That's fucking good, man. That's a really good one. And I also like repercussions. Oh, and that trippy red album too. Went back and listened to it. Very good. Spaceships with Young Thug off that. My favorite so far. It's such a chill song, man. Like I was um, last week. Um, I was baking a cake with Dylan, my friend Dylan. He was on co uh, a couple episodes ago, um, and his girlfriend Bella. They're they're really dope people. But we're I, we're uh, baking a cake and we're at her dorm, and it was like kind of late. It was like almost like twelve twelve a.m. And then I started heading home, and that song, like, came on. And let me tell you, that's, like, the chillest fucking song. Like, because I, I took, like, a highway home, and that is a chill song to be listening to, like, at night, on the highway. Just, it's a really chill song. Um, Young Thug has some real underrated, like, vocals, like, just in general. Everybody just thinks of Young Thug as just, like, this trap artist, but, you know... He can do some nasty R and B. I'll call it nasty R and B because it's not R and B that would ever like fuck somebody to. But I don't know. It's just it's nice. Like, mm. Mm, so good. But there's somebody else that dropped on Friday that I was meant to listen to, but I don't think I did. So I'd have to look that up again. I'd have to look to see who else dropped because there's somebody that I wanted to. All right, and then now moving into the political arena with old this old election we're like almost like fucking two weeks past the election day and uh trump hasn't conceded yet that's uh that's some balls i i mad respect for that you know he doesn't think that he's lost so good for him and i admired that but i'm not political at all like i wasn't even planning on voting this election up until uh, I, I can't I, I, I can't think straight right now, so I don't even remember what what made me want to vote this election, but I voted Biden. What I I totally just lost my train of thought on when I was going with this, but Trump Trump's lawyers have like quit on him? What if if I'm not mistaken? I don't know. Like I said, I don't follow it with political news, but guy came into work today talking about it and so I don't know if that's true or not. I saw a meme on Twitter about it, so I was like, but I don't know. I I tend not to like research like Twitter memes unless I genuinely find them interesting, so maybe there's some truth to that. Somebody uh correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Trump's lawyers quit on him after they started like the recount because I don't know, they just didn't find any evidence or anything that would make them think there was voter fraud. Not real political, so I'll just hop off that. <coughs> <clears throat> I know my strong I know I know my strong suits and stuff like that um sports so sports um this past week or well past day I should say quite an interesting array of games I got fucking titty fucked in my fantasy league because it was just horrible I I was projected like 158 which is horrible in this league and I scored like 121, which is definitely like below the mark. Like the average like people score in this league, it's like a six person league. So, you know, there's like people have like a lot of like good players and stuff like that. I'd say like the average score in the like on a weekly basis is at least like 160 unless you have like a really bad week. Um, and I had one of those really bad weeks by scoring that 121. Deshaun Watson shot the bed. Antonio Brown yeah, he performed about what they projected him to. Travis Holgum sucked a fucking dick. Alvin Kamara uh, carried my fucking team to, like, not being utterly pitiful. Uh, Duke Johnson did all right, but well below his projections. Mark Andrews did, like, just about exactly at his projections. Giovanni Bernard shuck, uh, fucking had a firecracker shoved up his fucking penis hole. And then literally my bench followed as out by 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 ir <laughs> so real bad week i lost um because his he got he had drew Brees who only got nine points which is really bad uh, i mean but he had like he had like other people carry him like deandre hopkins but oh my god dude 
when DeAndre Hopkins caught that touchdown today, I was on the phone with somebody and I had to stop myself from like screaming because I love DeAndre Hopkins. Best wide receiver in the fucking league, by the way. I don't know what Devontae Adams is thinking. Julio Jones could probably say that he was the best receiver in the league like fucking maybe three or four years ago, but that motherfucker is too injury prone now and he's not, he's fucking now. But, dude, I just stopped myself from, like, screaming um, because that shit, like, had me hyped. Um, but today, um, in NFL games, fucking Deshaun Watson really shut the fucking bed. But I think the big takeaway from that game was the fact that, because as soon as fucking Nick Chubb came back, I was like, well, what the fuck is Kareem Hunt going to do? So I fucking dropped him in my league, in that, in that actual league. And they had like a, a fucking 50-50 split on uh, runs. And I don't know what they did on fucking snaps, but fucking Kareem Hunt had fucking 100 rushing yards and had like fucking 28 through the fucking air. I was like, god damn it, I should have fucking kept him. But... That was like that looked like a really shit game. I went to work at two o'clock today, and I legit didn't get up until like one. Like I was awake, but I didn't get out of like bed until like one thirty. But um, so I recently got into uh, sports betting. Like, um, I used to do it like uh like two years ago on basketball, and I would only do like the free betting, and I made like some decent money off of it. So when basketball comes back. I'll be making some real money then. But until then, like football, it's, I don't know. P football, I feel, is like way more unpredictable. So I try not to make any super risky bets, at least not anymore. Um, I just do like super like easy like parlays. Like like this one is like an easy like win and shit like that. But the Packers had like a fucking... Vegas had them up like winning by like two touchdowns. And I really wanted to bet against it. Like, I wanted to take the the Jaguars on that because theirs was, like, plus 14. And I was like, dude, I feel like if it's plus 14, I should take it. And especially, like, the Jaguars because they're not, like, a fucking, like, they're a shit team. But, like, they're not, like, a super shit team where they don't fucking do anything week in and week out. Like, they have, like, decent pieces on offense with Chark and Robinson. So, I really should have fucking took that. Especially since the game ended 20 to 24, so. But my bet this week was um, I just took the money line on the Packers. Um, I think the Buccaneers as well, and then the Saints. So th those were my money lines that I took. Uh, I wanted to take the Patriots too, but I. I I only want to do like soup. I would only want to take like the money line on soup because for parlays, if you don't know what they are for betting, you have to get all of them right to like uh, earn money. So obviously, I want to put like a risky bet on that, but I, I really wanted to because I was like, I bet like the uh, Patriots are we're going to win tonight. So I picked them to win, but like I didn't actually like, pick them to like get money for it. But yeah, I was watching that game before I went to the gym and. Like, I, I don't know what the fuck the Ravens were doing. They just fucking were penis, brother. Um, but t Tom Brady, like, came back and, like, played, like, fucking Tom Brady and, like, unloaded on the Panthers, which I predicted. Um, because Tom Brady isn't going to get fucking embarrassed on national television like that. For, and then like not like bounce back and like destroy them because that was like the worst fucking game I've ever seen a fucking quarterback play besides Ben fucking Danucci a fucking couple weeks ago like that dude is ass but Brady last week was ass but this week came back and like molested the fucking Panthers like that's legit bestiality fucking 46 to 23 yeesh But Justin Herbert and Tua had a little duel today, which was kind of dope. Uh, it didn't look like Tua had like a super big game like how he did last week, but two touchdowns and uh, it smells dank in my room. Great, <laughs> two touchdowns, not bad. Um, like I said, with that fucking Cardinals game, like 
that that was that was intense. That was intense. I fucking Kyler Murray. He that's the uh, that's that next dude. I don't know why the fuck the Texans just gave away DeAndre Hopkins for injury prone David Johnson. Uh, that's probably like the worst fucking move ever. But uh, on those parlays, I made like twenty bucks. I think. I think it was twenty bucks. Yeah. So good there. Oh, I accidentally made a bet. Like, a, a, I accidentally placed a $50 bet tomorrow on Dalvin Cook scoring the first touchdown in the game. So he, he, here's how it happened. Here's how it happened. So I come back inside. Uh, this was, like, right before I took my shower, so I was, like, smoking. And I can't like I come back inside. I'm, th like, uh, I'm waiting for my brother to get out of the shower. So I'm, like, oh, let's see what if I have, like, any, like, free bets or anything like that that I could do. Um, and... I see, oh, they'll match my bet. But I got, I didn't read the fine print and say they will match my bet up to $20, and I betted 50, 50 fucking dollars that Dalvin Cook would be the first player to score a touchdown tomorrow night. So I really fucking hope that Dalvin Cook is the first player to score a touchdown tomorrow night. Um, that would be tremendous, um, including my stake. It'd be like... Uh, Two hundred twenty-five dollars, so that'd be pretty dope. But if he doesn't, it's like thirty dollars out of my pocket. But last week I won like one hundred eighty dollars off some parlays, so that's that's very good. Um, I think that might just be it in the world of sports. I basketball has been pretty quiet. Draft starts on wednesday i think free agency opens up on friday so i'll have more stuff to talk about then so then uh for other shit that happened last week call of duty or black ops cold war came out uh, I didn't get around to start playing it up until yesterday, and I gotta say, pretty pretty dope. Um, this is like the Call of Duty that it reminds me of. It reminds me of World War Two, and it also reminds me of Modern Warfare. That that those are like the vibes that I get from it. I do like the game so far. Um, the thing that I said is like I feel like this might be like my worst fucking Call of Duty because I like the biggest problem with it so far for me is the fact of, like, there's so many fucking head glitches. In every single Call of Duty, that has always been the one thing I can never adjust to encounter when I'm, like, having, like, a fight with somebody, is adjusting to the fact that they're using a head glitch, and I, I just legit can't even, like, adjust to it, and it's like my fucking Achilles heel. I'm in no way saying I'm, a, like, a great Call of Duty player if, like... S five is like the middle ground for Call of Duty players. I'd probably say, especially for Modern Warfare, I'd probably say like I'm a I'm a seven seven one. I would say seven point one. That's where I'd place myself. But this one, I might be like that middle tier. Like I saw like last night, I was like showing some flashes. I would say of being like a good good player this game, but that was when I didn't. I played. That was when I wasn't playing like all head glitchers um but i feel like that's going to be like there's always like a, like a quote issue for every call of duty i think that this one might be it is the head glitching and also some of the maps like i i have my playlist set to tdm hardpoint and dom and dude for, for some of these maps for dom are horrible uh like the desert map i think it's called satellite and then moscow one side is literally fucking built to, like, hold that B flag. And if you fucking lose it, your team just fucking sucks. Or they're not playing the objective. And it's fucking annoying. I will tell you, it's so fucking annoying. Um, I did try Control today. And that's actually a pretty dope game mode. I like it. Um, I would prefer if it was... A best of seven though because as opposed to because if you're unfamiliar it's like you have to capture there's like a defending team and a 
offensive team, you know, one side goes and captures these two points, the other side obviously defends it, and it's broken up into rounds. Uh, each team has, like, 25 lives per round, or whoever, like, captures, if they capture the thing first, then they win, obviously. Or you can just eliminate the other team. And that is a best of, um, six. That's the best of six. Um, I wish it was a best of seven, because I want to go, because that game does not go, that goes, that game goes by fast, which, I mean, I kind of like... But I played, the game that we played, I only played one game of it today. So, and the one that I played with uh, Mark and Ian, uh, it went down to the very last round. Like, we won two, they won two, and I don't know, it just went by really quick. I feel like that was like a really quick game, because um, Jarden told me that he was on his way, and I'm like, he, I finished the game, and got ready, and I was still like waiting on him. Like, he doesn't live that far from me, he's like... I was still waiting on him. Like, that that game went by pretty fucking quick, I felt like. Um, but, I'm I'm digging Cold War so far. Zombies is really fucking good. Um, I've always been a fan of zombies. Uh, I, like, fell off of, like, the interest from it after Black Ops 2. Um, and I, I like how they switched it up, though, because... I, a lot of people hate Call of Duty Ghosts, but I'm a big Call of Duty Ghosts advocate. Um, I really love Call of Duty Ghosts, and the main, one of the main reasons for that is Extinction. I always said that, obviously unpopular opinion, but Extinction was better than fucking Call of Duty Zombies. And one of the main reasons that I would say that Extinction was better than Zombies is because there's set objectives, and it's not set behind this complex, confusing, um, pay attention to every microscopic detail possible, and, like, guess and hope for the best to do a fucking Easter egg. It's, like, set objectives and classes, upgrades, team base and there's like a set ending that you're like working towards as opposed to zombies it's like all right round 60 it's time to go train these zombies again in my area um i have i just got a max ammo oh i just got caught in a fucking corner and the game's over like that that pisses me off like um that just legit pisses me off but zombies this year I really feel like I'm I'm going to enjoy a lot. I've only played one game, but I really enjoyed that one game that I played. Um, it's I wouldn't say it holds your hand, but you know there it, it offers like the mini map. I think is appreciated. I would say, especially since it's like a new formula that they're doing. But the my my the biggest thing that I'm a fan of is the X fill in that. So at round 10, it'll give you the option to exile, like, evacuate, get the fuck out in the game, earn rewards for that. Um, and then you just have to go to the LZ and make sure it's safe or whatever. And then, and it's not, it's not easy, by the way. It's not, like, an easy way to end the game. Like, it, it gets hard there. But if you do that, you're obviously able to exfil. But if you don't, you have the option to keep continuing. You can keep playing the game keep doing all that stuff you don't have to exfil and it gives you the option like every five rounds after round 10 so the option is always going to be there for you so long as you're able to get there but it's good and it's like kind of creepy and gross and i like that so yeah call of duty zombies i look forward to playing it more um obviously like when call of duty's come out though like i i play play the fuck out of the multiplayer just because i've been playing call of duty games ever since I could fucking remember got me into online gaming but so far i would say initial 
initial playthroughs on this game. Pretty good. I'm digging in a lot. Um, something else that happened in the world of gaming last week. Console releases. So, if you're one of the motherfuckers that were able to get one, good on you. Um, looking back, I did have the opportunity to get opportunity to get the xbox series x but i don't know i kind of don't have the money for it right now so i am proud of myself for saying for saying no despite how badly i really want it but still um but at the same time it's kind of like i'm kind of happy that i didn't get it because i am hearing like some issues about like frames and stuff like that it's something that microsoft or sony can't fix with a simple update and stuff like that but I don't know. If I don't get the console right away, I'm okay with it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've been checking Best Buy, like, every day to see if they're, like, in stock because I'll just put on my fucking Best Buy card and then finance it. Then I could, quote, afford it. But <laughs> I've been been looking. I work at GameStop now, and it was kind of crazy because it's, like, my first, like, full week at GameStop, and I'm still, like, learning shit. Let me tell you, this fucking, uh guy called me the night before the playstations are supposed to release and he says you know like you have any extras available and i was like i don't have extras but a guy canceled his pre-order so when we open tomorrow at 10 a.m we technically will have one for sale and he was talking about how he's only fight anybody who tries to like camp out and like be in front of him and all this other stuff and he was waiting there for at 4 a.m so, and he got his playstation um and the xbox people the day of the xbox i had like a couple more of those like extras to sell and these guys came like walked into the store like at 12 30 p.m and was like hey um you guys you guys will have any extra xboxes to sell tonight or thinking that we like did like a midnight release i'm like yeah we will um we open at 10 a.m tomorrow and i have like four and he's like oh okay cool he's like is it okay if we like wait out for it i'm like yeah go for it not thinking that they meant like right now but they did mean right now they looked around a little bit and then they're all like they just waited out in their car they came in every once in a while they just talked about it but those guys really wanted their fucking Xboxes. I mean, they got them, so good on them. Hope they're enjoying them. All that good stuff. Um, and something, a game, another game, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. That looks really fucking dope. Um, I'm going to buy it here at some point once like, I chill out on Call of Duty because I know I'll be playing this like anytime I get on. Like I even leave Skyrim next to my Xbox just in case I want to play Skyrim because... Right before Call of Duty came out, I was really feeling Skyrim. I got big back into Skyrim. One of my, like, favorite all-time games. And I got... I don't know, I just been playing the fuck out of it. Like, replaying, like, everything. All that good stuff. Never really played with, like, mods, like, too much. Like, I've went back and added mods and stuff like that. But, like, having, like, a playthrough with mods and stuff like that. It's not, like... I'm not, like, cheating or anything. Like, using, like, the ultimate level up or anything like that. Anything, like, makes it, like, easier. It's just, like, cosmetic tweaks to the game armor replacers shit like that but i'm fucking with it i was fucking with it i still fucking with it and i probably hop back into that too uh soon that's why i didn't want to get valhalla that way i like just up and leave skyrim in the dirt but um oh so yesterday i got two tattoos because my artist uh, who I also book for her too. Check her out. Uh, Jinx Tattoos on Facebook and Instagram. Very great artist. Very talented. If you live in the Fort Wayne area. She hit me up because I was trying to get these two pieces done. and our, uh, The uh, the stars would not align the past week and a half. But she had, uh, she had one of her clients cancel on her last night. I got off at four. So I was like, oh yeah, sure. I, we, I trade work for tattoos with her, which is a fair trade because I have a lot of tattoos. I like getting tattoos. It's like, I want her to, like, do something, like, big because she hasn't really done anything, like, big on me. She's done, she's done my hand, which has been, like, awesome, and I really like it, but there there's not, it's not, like, anything, like, super big. So, and then, like, uh, yesterday... She did a little Juice World 999 tattoo, which, by the way, 
I never really got big into Juice World up until like a couple months ago. That I I never knew the 999 message. That's a really good message, by the way. Love it. Um, that's why I like wanted to get it tatted on me because you know I think it's a dope message and it's cool. And then I also got a um, what was supposed to be a Mother's Day gift, but that's when Corona happened, so shut down all that good stuff. But it's just going to be a Christmas present this year for my mom. Um, but anyways, I was like, I got it. She should do, if I give, if I let her like do something, like I'm, I said, do you think you could do like a Skyrim theme tattoo, like on my back? Like you, I told her, I was like, you can do whatever you want. Just like, just like, can you make it Skyrim theme? And on, I knew she played games because her, her name's Jinx because her gamer tag used to be that. Like it was her like first gamer tag. And I had no idea. She was like, yeah, I have like 300 plus hours in the Skyrim. I'm like, holy fucking shit. So do I. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty fucking dope. Not going to lie. So I'm excited about that. I don't know when we're going to like do that. Like I'm in no rush for it at all. Um, but I'm excited for sure. Um, also in uh, Jared news, it turns out guys are more find find me more attractive than women like they are more likely to like it appears like talk to me and date me which is kind of surprising um i'm not saying i'm ugly or anything but like come on ladies step up your fucking game jeez um <laughs> which i thought like just like talking about it, like that's pretty fucking unique right like here I am, minding my own fucking business, and it just fucking hits me. That's not how it went out, but like, I mean, I don't know. That's pretty fucking interesting, I'd say. Also, tonight at the gym, I tasted my own fucking blood. So, like two, two or three weeks ago, I had smoked weed for the first time, but I was also like, drinking too so i i was faded or cross whatever you want to call it um and i'm pretty sure i cracked a rib that night and i thought my like i think i, I got super excited about something and, like jumped in the air and like landed like flat on the on my back and shit like that but like more towards my right side and like f because my rib has been like in excruciating pain for that next couple days and then it was like really like it felt bruised but there's like nothing like bruised and it was like just felt like that all the way up until today when it felt like how it did like that first day but worse like any sort of like movement and if i was like if i was breathing like more than like normal like really having like heavy breaths and shit like that i was in pain and i remember we it was like I was doing this um I don't know what the fuck it is but it was with these dumbbells and I was just like um pulling them up like above my head and I was I was doing the set that I had been doing for like the past couple of times so I knew it was a set that I could do um but because I usually like tap out like m like I start to like tap out like my arms like start to like give up on me like towards the end of the second set and then by the time that i'm do the second the third set um and, you know it's a little bit harder and stuff like that but i'm able to like go through it but i couldn't even finish like i damn near couldn't finish the first one and i got through the second one but for the life of me i couldn't do like the last couple ones on that S like I couldn't fin. I stopped at. We do it in sets of ten for this one, and I couldn't. I st I had to stop at nine. Like I legit couldn't like do anything further, and then I tried to do more on the third set, but I don't know what the fuck happened to me. Like I I I was like, Ugh. Ah, that that fucking hurt by the way, and I got up and I started like pace like around because like that had not been feeling right and then like i like cough like a little bit 
and then I feel like the like I feel like my blood and taste I was like in the back of like my fucking throat. I'm like Oh my god. And then like you know that feeling that you have when it's like you're going to burp, but then like it like you could also it could also just be like a little bit like bile or upcheck or I don't know what the fuck it is. But you have that moment. I I I felt that coming. I was like, Am I about to cough up my blood? But I didn't. But I was like, oh, God, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. So, yeah, that's um, that's what's been going on in my life right about now. And I think that'll uh, probably be it for my current events. So, appreciate all you guys tuning in. And I'll see you guys when I see you guys to the next XP. Fuck, I told you I'm not all the way here. Till the next UP. See you guys.